Welcome back to Digital Wandering. And I wanted to bring to you another comparison of smartphones. Today, Ubuntu Touch versus Calyx OS. Now, I use both of these smartphones every day. And let's just introduce them here. And I've shown so many times I've shown these devices. So this is the Ubuntu Touch device that I'm using currently uh, on a Pixel 3a. And this is my Pixel 2 running Calyx OS. And I use them every day. Now, I do have to be clear, I tend to grab the Ubuntu Touch device more often than not. I probably use it twice as much as the Calyx OS device. Now, that being said, then this might surprise you, uh, but if I'm recommending either of these privacy focused operating systems to just a general person out there, I think I would recommend Calyx OS before I, for most people, the average person before I would recommend Ubuntu Touch. And, and that's despite me using Ubuntu Touch more and enjoying using it. Let me see if I can explain this. Now my videos are unscripted, so I'm going off the top of the dome here, but let's see if we can give all the different ways that Calyx OS may be better for the average person. Now one thing is this is an Android phone. I mean, it has the look and feel that you are familiar with from using other Android devices. I mean, it gains the benefit of all the billions of dollars that have gone into Android over the years to make a well-polished operating system. I don't, I haven't encountered any bugs, not to say that there aren't any, but the look and feel is what you expect from a major operating system that you get here. Now, um, under Ubuntu Touch, uh, they, they've done a great job in developing this, but if you look on the UBPort's website and look at the variety of phones that uh, Ubuntu Touch has been ported to, None of them has a like a hundred percent working port of Ubuntu Touch. There's always things that do not work, or things that are still a work in progress with Ubuntu Touch devices. So that's something that is definitely going to be a turnoff for most people. That there are going to be little bugs and things that just do not work under Ubuntu Touch. And what those bugs are depends on the smartphones that you get. Now, one thing is this is a Pixel 3a. Um, have it on Ubuntu Touch, but the Pixel 3a is also eligible to run uh, Calyx OS as well. So you could get this if you wish, you could find one. A lot of the cheap ones have uh, screen issues. That's something you have to deal with. Uh, but um, you could get this and then make a decision later on if you wanted to run Calyx OS or uh, Ubuntu Touch on it. Just make sure you get one that's factory unlocked so you have access to the bootloader so that you can put a alternate uh, OS on there. Now, there's some other issues here. So on, just as far as the OS, I would give the edge to uh, uh, Calyx OS um, just because of the look and feel and the polish of it. Uh, but you also have apps here. And the app situation is kind of interesting. Um, now the main app store uh, that I use on the uh, Calyx OS operating system is the F-Droid store. So let's just open that up. And we have here the open store under Ubuntu Touch. Now between the F-Droid store and the open store, um, I think it's not, it's not super wide gap between the two. I think I would still get the edge to the F-Droid store uh, that we have here under Calyx OS over the open store under Ubuntu Touch. Uh, but the gap between the stores are not super wide, uh, but there is a slight gap there and I still have this F-Droid store that's available here as a, uh, as a, as a slightly better store. I just think that some of the, the open source Android apps here are just in some ways are a little bit more capable uh, under this operating system. 
Now there is, and it's a work in progress, but there is Android support under Ubuntu Touch uh, through Anbox. Now the thing is, I haven't, I did install it or activate it, uh, but I couldn't give any get any Android apps to work for me under Ubuntu Touch. And I've seen some videos online with some demos. Uh, so some people have said that they've been able to get some Android apps to work, but I haven't been able to get any to work. Uh, it's, and, and then I'm hearing that there's also something else in the future works uh, that will provide better Android uh, access than, uh, than Anbox. Uh, I haven't looked into it uh, greatly. Uh, so it's still a work in progress to get Android apps to work under Ubuntu Touch. And it's really, um, it depends on the capabilities of the user now, how much you're able to get out of that. But there's, you know, here you have direct access to Android apps, the open source apps here, and it goes beyond that. Um, so let's just look at here, the Aurora store. Now this is something that you cannot match right now under Ubuntu Touch under any circumstances. These are, this is a direct mirror of the uh, Play Store, the Google Play Store. And you see the apps that are available here are the same mainstream, app, mainstream apps that you use on any Android phone. And so you see, you know, Netflix, Disney Plus, Spotify, uh, Facebook, official apps. Uh, so this is something that you just cannot replicate at all under Ubuntu Touch. Uh, you have access, if you wish to use official apps, you can. I haven't downloaded anything from the Aurora store. Um, I've just used the um, F-Droid store under uh, Kalux OS. The reason being is because I already have like iOS devices and stock Android devices uh, that run that I already downloaded the mainstream apps on. So I could use those apps any all day, any day under my other devices. So for this device, I don't really need to use those mainstream Android apps. Uh, but they are there, and I think for most people out there who would get a phone like this, they may be using it exclusively. Uh, so they, their only smartphone is a Kalix OS phone, and they probably would have a need to occasionally use um, full Android apps that require Google services on their device. And here, you have the ability to do so. Uh, there are ways, I guess, to spoof uh, either Google services or to, to trick <laughs> trick Google into uh, allowing those apps to run on your device. Even though like Google services are kind of removed here, you can there are ways around that if you use these devices in some of these uh, alternate app stores. So that's something the app situation under Calix OS for the average user is going to be a huge huge plus. If you're looking between these two operating systems, I, I, don't, I don't think it's really any way around that here. Um, browsers. Now, I, I do love the uh, Morph browser under uh, Ubuntu Touch. That's the main web browser here. Uh, but when you when you talk about uh, Calix OS, uh, I just think that the um, the Chromium browser, DuckDuckGo, the Tor browser, uh, Foss browser. There's so many different browsers that you have uh, accessible here under Calix OS. And I think uh, those Android browsers provide us a, a better experience than Morph. And so the browser experience, I definitely have to give the edge again to Calix OS. Uh, more choices and better performance. Even though the performance here is not terrible, I would give the edge still to Calix OS.
media. Now, I do have issues with media on Android phones or Android variant phones, uh, but once you get the media on the devices, and and the real difference here is with like uh, video and photos. The experience under Calyx OS is just going to be superior to the experience that you have under Ubuntu Touch. I would say it's about 50% better in managing, viewing your media under uh, Calyx OS over Ubuntu Touch. And um, audio for things like music, I don't really have a, a major difference there. I think they both handle that really well. But photos and video, I have to give the, the edge, uh, the clear edge to Calyx OS. And now security, uh, they both are very privacy focused, are designed not to be sharing your information with advertisers, uh, at least on the OS level. Um, but uh, there's certain features under uh, Calyx OS, uh, like for example, encryption, uh, my device under Calyx OS is fully encrypted. Uh, that's not the case under my Ubuntu Touch device. So I definitely feel more comfortable with my uh, information under my under my phone under Calyx OS than I do under Ubuntu Touch since there's no encryption. Also, you do have some also included things like a free VPN uh, that was included in the in the uh, installation bundle under Calyx OS. Actually, there's a couple free uh, VPNs that were included here. There's one of uh, by the Calyx Institute uh, right here. That's their VPN, and then there's also another one here that was. And these are free uh, VPNs. Uh, you don't have anything like that included in the bundle in Bluetooth Touch. Although I do it supports VPNs, there's not any included. And um, I'm not really sure about VPN support in the open store, if there's any VPN apps, um, official apps anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just for the, the average person, Calyx OS is definitely going to be the superior choice um, on just about every major category that I can think of. Um, where Ubuntu Touch wins out if it's someone who is looking to get away from Android. So if you're someone that just doesn't want to use an Android phone and is trying to get away as far away from Android as possible, and they're looking for something just entirely different, uh, I then that's where the Ubuntu Touch would come in, and then I would probably recommend it. Uh, but as someone who's not unhappy with Android as a user, but is just unhappy with their uh, privacy policies, then Calyx OS is probably better because you still get the look and feel and usability, uh, but it's more privacy focused. Um, so I, hopefully that explains why um, I think Calyx OS, between these two operating systems, as it stands right now in September 2021, why I think that is better. But I'm very happy uh, that you, for anyone who's gotten this far in the video, and I'd like to hear your comments. If you have any uh, comments that you'd like to add or any things that I missed, uh, I, would be, I would really love to hear from you. So thank you very much uh, for being here with me here at, at Digital Wandering. Have a great rest of the day.